Welcome to Karbala. I love this place. Masalama. Masalama. Having the perspective from the ground, looking up. Oh. We have to be polite so we have to eat whatever they put on our plates. I'm mouth watering. Oh, lost power. Are we here? Welcome to Karbala in the central part of Iraq. This place is known as the Mecca for Shia Muslims. It is unbelievable to be here right now. You can see all around me, there's people crowding. I'm in between the two shrines. This place is bustling with life. It's only 10 in the morning right now, and it's about to get super busy here because every year in October, they have the biggest pilgrimage on earth. Over 15 million people are walking from different countries all over the region to pray here in this exact place. It is just beautiful. You can feel the spirit in the air. But in this video, I want to talk about the hospitality because during the pilgrimage, everybody is known to open up their doors to strangers, have anybody just walk into their house, make friends with each other. And that's exactly what I'm about to experience here today in Karbala. So I'm going to take you on a journey and show you how hospitable these people are. I never heard about Karbala until about a year ago when an email hit my inbox from a guy named Hassan who invited me to come to his hometown and participate in the world's largest gathering. I repeat, the world's largest gathering. He told me that every October, more than 15 million Shia Muslims march to Karbala to commemorate Imam Hussein, the grandson of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. So I put it on my list of stories to tell, but wasn't sure if I'd ever make it given the security threats and the challenges of getting a visa to Iraq. But now that I'm here in the country, I had to visit Karbala even though it's not during the Great Pilgrimage. I still wanted to see what's going on here and experience the adrenaline rush. If you've never heard of Karbala before, it's a city of 800,000 located 100 kilometers southwest of Baghdad. It is considered as the holiest place in the world for Shia Muslims, one of the two main branches of Islam. My friend Alvaro and I have 24 hours in Karbala to see if we can experience the beautiful sights and the world-class hospitality that we've heard so much about. Trust me that if you watch this video until the end, you will never think about Iraq the same way ever again. The coolest thing about Karbala is when you walk through the markets, everyone just jumps out at you and says, hi, where are you from? I've been telling them I'm from Spain, just to avoid any uh, confusion. And I'll, obviously I can speak a little bit of Spanish and we got Alvaro from Spain here. So that's just, it's just like an easy go-to country. Nobody, whenever you say Spain, nobody says, friendly country, friendly country and they want to talk about, about soccer. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. But uh, you can really feel the generosity here. Everybody's like reaching out. We tried to buy some stuff earlier and they wouldn't let us pay, which is a uh, typical that you'll find all around the Islamic world. But here in Karbala might be the center of it all. My friend, okay. tell me about the hospitality culture of Karbala. He say uh, you should come in the Muharram to see the hospitality of Iraqi people. You came in the normal day. How many people come here during pilgrimage? They have the most simple part. This season they come uh, 16 or 20 million. 20 million people come here. Okay, wow. Shukran, Habibi. We made our way to the center of town where all the action takes place. The shrines of Imam Hussein and Abbas are glistening on both sides of the perfectly manicured walkways. Absolutely stunning mosques and mausoleums are in every direction that you turn. I keep asking myself, is this real life or am I dreaming? It reminds me of something like what Mecca would look like, even though I've never been there. It's just a very spiritual place. They're bringing bodies. They're walking them from one shrine to the other. It's unbelievable. It's happening every five minutes throughout the whole day. I want to know about the pilgrimage here. Can they tell me about the pilgrimage? He say, uh, I am come to uh, visit Imam Hussein and his brother uh, Abbas. Over the year, they come for here millions of people. What's your favorite thing about Karbala? Him. Imam Hussein and Imam Abbas. Thank you so much, man. What caught me by surprise the most is how the main mosque supplies free food for everyone. I've only seen this one time at the Golden Temple in Amritsar, India, but here in Karbala, they are serving a lot more people. Behind me, people are already starting to line up because they offer free food to anybody and everybody who comes here. It's really amazing. You can literally just line up and eat for free, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. I can't even imagine the kitchen back there. There's a hidden kitchen somewhere, maybe underground, behind this mosque, uh, where they're making tens, if not hundreds of thousands of meals for all these people. What you're seeing right now are women carrying all the food that they got for free. Literally, they just wait in line. I've been invited to eat here with the family. They're very nice people. They're giving me all this food for free. What a moment, huh? 
really hospitable people. Like they're just sharing their meal. They, they're four people. They're just sharing yeah. two more. So Same they, food, but for six now. I mean, you've noticed like if you say no, if you try yeah. to give you something, you have to take. You want to be polite enjoying, yeah, and just eat a little bit. But she was actually force feeding us. Yeah, yeah. If you say no, it's really disrespectful. Yeah. So shukran, shukran. Bye bye. That was really special. They're so friendly. We kind of approached them and they kind of insisted that we eat with them. I didn't want to eat all their food, so I took a few bites, but it was more of the cultural experience to sit with them and just, we can't even speak to each other. They don't speak English, I don't speak Arabic, but it was such a special moment that we shared. And uh, I will forever remember that moment of eating with that family here in Karbala. Finally, it was time to head inside Imam Hussein's glorious shrine. Whenever you enter a place of worship in Islam or Judaism or many other religions, you take off your shoes. We got special access to go inside of the beautiful Imam Hussein Shrine in Karbala, Iraq. This is the exact site where the pilgrimage takes place every October. 15 million Shia Muslims are walking to this exact place. It's one of the holiest places in the whole world. It's like the Mecca for Shia Islam and it's such a wonderful experience to be here right now. And I just want to say that Islam is a beautiful religion. This is coming from a Jewish person. As I've traveled the world, I've met so many Muslim people. A lot of them are my best friends. And it's a religion of peace, a religion of happiness. And I know that you guys have maybe heard the wrong things on the news about Islam, but I just want to say that it is truly amazing. And this experience that I'm having right now is so spiritual, and it's something that I will never, ever forget. Somehow, we got invited to the back VIP area with all the important bosses. At first, I thought we were going to get busted for filming, but it ended up being quite the opposite. We've just been offered chai here in the back room during prayer time. This is unbelievable. This is... Travel rule number 17. Never let fear get in the way from living your life. I'm lost for words. I, I can like literally... I've never seen anything like this. It's like going to Mecca, being uh, a Christian and a Jewish, with unfettered access, mm -hmm. doing prayer. This is... You've never and seen invited this. into some back executive room. We've been to every country in the world. We've never seen this kind of awesome Unbelievable. I'm, I, I can't even speak right now. I told them you are the traveler and you want uh, to show the people the bright side of the right. And they are so afraid. That's Haidar explaining how we got access to this amazing VIP room. Like, dude, look at the ceiling. <laughs> we're, we're literally sitting here in luxury on the, on the front side of the mosque. Thank you to this guy right here. He's a camera guy, but he's also a connection. He's a networker. Wow, that was a immediate get out of my way. Should we move? This is the main boss, security guy in the mosque. He got us the access and the permission to shoot. And he invited us to the VIP room. So we're, we're his guests now. Every year, they can over the world. 7 0 or 1 7? 7 0 million. Throughout the year? Over, yes. Over the year? In one year. One year. Kind of feels a little bit like Iran in here. The buildings, obviously the Shia religion is also found in Iran. And it's uh, very, very cool. It's also nice to see women mixed with men. In many other mosques, you have a men's section and a women's section, but here they both kind of mingle in together. Tell me about how amazing mosques are in general. I love them. I love any religious temple. And mosques in particular are very intricate. And just the designs and how people are so devout and Feel in the energy in the air, bro. And the carpets. I love carpets and like being barefoot. It just connects you to the spirituality of the shrine. Alvaro, guys, every country in the world. He's been to every country and I haven't. Give me Almost that. three. three no, but I'm away. not there yet. Then so we'll be in the same club. But I'm not there yet. Hermanos. So. Yeah. Hermanos. Almost. As this beautiful day is turning to night, as the prayers illuminate the sky, we are hungry. And so our buddy Haidar, who's actually from Babylon, he has a friend here. They found out we were in town and they immediately invited us over for dinner, which we of course accepted. We're hungry, we didn't even eat lunch today. And I'm also very excited to experience Iraqi hospitality inside of a home. And I'm getting honked at. 
Taxi, taxi, how are we gonna fit in here, bro? Are we really gonna fit in here? This is crazy. There's no way. Get oh in. man, there's Get no in. way. Get in. Get in. How long is the drive? It's uh, 30 minutes. We just arrived here at the house, knocking on the door. Hello. How are you? Hello, hello. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Welcome in the uh, city of Imam Ali. Very, very, very great man. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a brother. <laughs> What's happening? Just naming players from Real Madrid from back in the day. Every time I travel, when someone knows I'm from Spain or Madrid, this is the debate. This is the first thing that comes up. We go to every country, we cross borders, we go to very difficult checkpoints and, and border crossings. Uh, this comes really handy to break the ice and start this uh, amicable conversation. And now you're automatically yeah. a good friend. We are both travelers, Avado and I. And uh, we're very happy to be here. And also tell him when you get in someone's house, that's how you really experience the culture. He say you are welcome in Iraq. Uh, all Iraqi people love to see a visitor from other countries. Thank you. We're hungry. We didn't really eat lunch today, so we're excited to eat your food. You came out wrong. <laughs> we're gonna break into your refrigerators. He says uh, the guests bring blessing for them. You're wow. a law student. Hey. Now students in Jamal Islam. How, how old? Hey. Old? Uh, you. 22. 22. Oh, you look younger. Very good. So, to somebody who's never heard of the pilgrimage, how could you explain it to them? He says when Imam Hussein killed in Karbala in 61 Hijri, all the people or Shia come over the world to visit Imam Hussein in the Ashura. Uh, Imam Hussein came, came to Iraq from Saudi Arabia to separate peace in his grandfather religion. Oh. <laughs> Look at this chicken. Oh man. This is Iraqi Dolma. Oh my god. How long did you guys cook for? Did they know we were hungry? Like... I'm very, very excited. You're hungry, man. I'm mouth watering. Oh, lost power. Are we here? <laughs> okay, power is. I've got flashlights. What I love about this whole setting is that, first of all, they just eat right on the floor. There's no tables, there's no chairs. It's very normal just to put a little piece of plastic and eat on the floor. And then second of all, this food looks incredible. We haven't eaten um, really since breakfast and the breakfast was nothing. nothing. Just a little bit of street food that we were kind of scared to eat to get sick. So to have all this fresh food right here in front of us is wonderful. And um, thank you guys for organizing this. This is cool. You think we'll get it back? We might not get it back. Might not. Like eating in the dark. Oh, oh generator. No, I can't hear audio. Okay, I'll let you explain what's happening right now. I don't even know. Like the women in the house have been preparing this feast for hours, probably Apparently, all day. Apparently, but it was but a we, last minute preparation. They, they invited us like a couple hours ago, so yeah. like this has been all very, very surprising. They keep bringing food out. Look, you see, look at behind us right now. There is. When's the last time you saw a table like that? I hardly see the feast like this. It was such short notice. It looks so it's crazy. good. I'm so hungry. I can't wait to dig in. Very nice. Very good. Very nice. <laughs> He apologized uh, about this the little uh, food. Apologizing? This is a feast, my friends. Yes, yeah. Little amount of food? Yeah, yeah, little food. He apologized, so apologized. In our homes, in Christmas, we don't get this kind of food. This is a Tuesday night. Exactly. He would have killed a sheep if we would have given more notice. Uh, he made that because the Iraq, uh, the country of hospitality, he want to make everything, every food, because you came far away from the US. Ready to feast? Yeah, dude. I'm salivating. Yeah, I'm starving. Like, I don't even know where to start. Delicious. In the U.S. for Thanksgiving dinner, they they spend like days and days preparing food, and this was only in like a couple hours. And this is an incredible meal. Iraqi dolma is greatly, and it's got uh, rice and a little bit of meat inside. It's super tasty. Bread, bread, bread. 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 Bread
See how much you get. <laughs> wow, that was half and half. Yeah, that was really good. Almost. Why would they spice it inside? Oh, delicious. I'm already oh. sweating. All over the Arab world, they know how to eat. This is common all over the place, and it's just wonderful to experience. The non stop serving, so I feel bad. I need to eat it, but there's just force feeding me. Oh man, what is that? Adan? Oh, Adan. I like Adan. Do you like the one of the kids? I love it. It's like sour yogurt, is how I would explain it. Sour, salty yogurt. Tell them if I lived here, I would gain 10 kilos in, in a month. Look at that smile. Look at that smile. <laughs> He's peeling an orange. Is he, he going to give it to me or Alvaro? Which one? Both of you have half. I think actually that's what's happening. Okay, she's done. What's his name? The, the, this guy? Salam. Salam. Peace. Peace. Salam. Salam. Which means peace. Shukran. Thank you. Shukran, Jay. Jay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. In my country, like maybe I can offer some payment. Yeah. Can I pay him for this? Ask him. They go like, I'm in bloody. أتبع على مود هذا الشيء يقدر أتبع لك؟ لا مستحيل لا هاي إهانة تعتبر impossible that's change هاي تعتبر إهانة he's gonna hit you now he's gonna hit you if you say that again أنت إذا تريد أني أنطيك لين يجيت he will give you money he doesn't eat now عندي عندي الخطار عندي الخطار you're banished now الخطار أعطي عيني أكون guys I just want to take a second and speak from the heart right now this experience is really something special it's delicious I've traveled all over the world and I've been fortunate enough to enjoy many meals with many local friends, but nothing has topped this. The people here are the definition of hospitable. This is gift for you. I cannot accept this. It looks very valuable, my friend. The city of Karbala stimulates all of my senses and it's just incredible. I am extremely grateful to have the chance to share my adventures with you guys and thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, yeah, very good. Wow, look cute. My friend. Shukran. Shukran. No. Thank you. You're Shukran. welcome. Please. Roll out of this place. <laughs> yeah, crawl, crawl out of this place. Man. Roll out like a, like a barrel. Well, we just finished the meal. It's hard to stand up. I'm so full. Really, really hard. But it was such an epic time. Did you enjoy? Of course. Always experiencing Middle Eastern hospitality is one of my favorite things when I'm traveling. Absolutely. So. Anytime you can get in a local home, you do it. What a moment that was. Hope you guys enjoyed Karbala. Such a cool city. The bar keeps getting set higher and higher because this will be so hard to beat. They just really are that kind and genuine in their heart. And they're actually so kind that they offered to drive us back to our hotel so we don't have to take a taxi. So shukran. This guy is the best. Thank you. Shukran. Yes. Unbelievable experience. You guys want live updates? on things that are happening, hit me up on Instagram, at Jabinski, and uh, gosh, wow, Iraq. Hey guys, just wanna pop in here real quick and tell you something really important. So, a lot of you guys have been asking me what am I gonna do when I finish visiting every single country in the world, and my goal is to help you guys become better travelers and save money. I am very excited to announce that my ultimate travel hacking course is coming out on August 12th. It has all of my best travel tips, hacks, secrets, and resources that I picked up from visiting 194 countries. I've literally spent the last five months of my life writing step-by-step -step guides for how to book the cheapest flights, what to bring in your suitcase, how to get travel visas, how to make local friends, how to navigate cities, how do you travel rewards cards, how to find the cheapest hotels, and tons more packed into three hours of learning. The first 500 people to purchase the course will be given an automatic discount of 50% and be entered to win one of three Sony ZV-1 vlog cameras. Guys, this is the biggest discount that I will ever be offering for this course, so I hope you will take advantage of it. The only catch is that you must be signed up for my email newsletter, which you can find in the link in the description below. And with that all being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you next week from Iraq. Peace. We have just entered the world's largest cemetery. It's in a city called Najaf in central Iraq. There are literally 10 million bodies buried here. I wish I could fly my drone and see it from the sky, but we are exploring during sunset. Avado, how do you feel? It's a cemetery, but uh, it's quite impressive, man. Like so many tombstones. Go inside. Whoa. There's bodies in here, man. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.